methods in computational chemistry. So in the last video, we have discussed some basics of computational chemistry applications. And in this video, we'll be discussing various methods used in computational chemistry. There are actually five methods mainly used in computational chemistry. They are the ab initio methods, density functional theory based methods, semi-empirical methods, molecular mechanics, and molecular dynamics. We will be discussing various aspects of these programs in the coming slides. So, uh, if you want any detailed idea about these methods, you can refer to my past videos because I have already given uh, detailed lectures on all these topics. All these are available in my channel. Now, again, if you are dividing these five methods, you can divide it like this. The methods based on classical mechanics and the methods based on quantum mechanics. Here, molecular mechanics and molecular dynamics are methods based on classical mechanics, whereas these are the methods, these three are based on the quantum mechanics. The difference is that the quantum mechanical methods are based on the Schrodinger wave equation and they consider each individual atomic potential separately. Whereas the classical mechanical methods are based on, of course, the Newton's laws of motion and they are not considering individual atomic properties or potentials. They are considering the total force field or the effective field in the system. The difference mainly arises when you are considering the size of the system. If you are considering a very large system like a protein or a biomolecule, you cannot rely on quantum mechanical methods because it, it will consider the potentials of each and every atom. If you are considering a biomolecule, there may be thousands or lakhs of atoms. So, it will be very difficult to consider their potentials individually. So, in those cases, we rely on the classical mechanical methods in which the total force field is considered. Whereas, if you are considering any small system, like uh, if you are going to study the properties of a semiconductor or any other systems which contain less than 100 atoms or something like that, you can rely on quantum mechanics because it considers the individual atomic properties and the size of the system is comparatively smaller. And again, if you are coming into these three methods, into these three quantum mechanical methods, there may be some differences between them. And also there are some differences here. So, please note that if you are doing any experiment based on classical mechanics, it is not necessary that uh, you don't need quantum mechanics anywhere. Because as I mentioned in the last video, uh, sometimes we may use more than one program in computational chemistry. Therefore, if you are relying on any classical mechanical methods, please have an idea about quantum mechanics too because you may need it. And the vice versa may also be correct. If you are using any methods based on quantum mechanics, have an idea about the classical mechanics because sometimes, sometimes you may need them or you may not need them. That depends upon your project and your work. See, now, if you, and uh, as I mentioned earlier, all of these methods have been discussed earlier in my slides and if you have any doubt, you can refer to my past videos. Now, uh, the ab initio method, if I am uh, giving a small introduction about the ab initio method, they are, uh, theoretical, they are based on theoretical principles and they do not include any data. That means if you don't know anything about the molecule, then you can depend on the ab initio method because it will depend or it, it, it is independent of the uh, experimental data because it calculates everything theoretically. And the disadvantage is that it will require a lot of time. It will require a lot of time to complete and also it is very expensive. I have already given a lecture regarding various techniques used and the comparison between them. This have been issued DFT, molecular mechanics, molecular dynamics, etc. I will share the description of that video in the comment section, on the uh, description section. Then the DFT method. DFT method is actually a modification or extension towards the Abinitia method. It's not a modification, it's an extension or a simplified version. See, in, a, in Abinitia method, we are using the Schrodinger wave equation and you are using the wave function psi to calculate the properties of the system. Whereas in DFT, we are using electron density functional. The difference between DFT and Abinitia is that if you are using an Abinitia method, if there are n atoms in the system, then you will require three n coordinates. That means three coordinates x, y, and z for each of the particle. And if there are n particles, you need three n system, three n coordinates. Whereas in the case of DFT, in the case of DFT, you are depending on the electron density functional, and therefore you don't need three n coordinates. If you have n atoms, you only need three coordinates x, y, and z because the electrons are not considered individually. We are considering the electron density functional. 
So that is the difference between the ab initio method and the DFT method. DFT method is comparatively a uh, simplified version of ab initio because it depends only on three coordinates, whereas ab initio may depend on three n coordinates. And also, I have also mentioned the semi-empirical methods here. Semi-empirical methods are actually based on some experimental values. That means any program that runs on a semi-empirical platform will have a library of integrals already installed with the program. That means the basic idea is that semi-empirical method assumes some functions or ignores some other. That means your calculations will be much faster. The assumed or ignored functions may be uh, calculated from the available library of integrals and the library of integrals means that uh, uh, some uh, uh, systems which correspond to different configurations or different uh, molecular arrangements or molecular systems so if you are taking a system and uh, the integral the, the, the most similar system in that uh, library of integral matches to your system then you will get a comparatively good result but if the system you have chosen is not in any match with the system and the library of integrals of your program then you will get an erratic result because many values are to be assumed by the program or some values are to be in fact omitted therefore semi empirical methods are a faster alternative to ab initio but their result varies in accuracy because if the system you have chosen matches with the system in the library of the integral of the program then you will get a good result and if it doesn't match then you will get a poor result now, these are some explanations about the um, methods used which are based on quantum mechanics. Now, we will come to molecular mechanics. That is the methods which are based on the classical mechanics, Newton's laws of motion. See, in the case of molecular mechanics, it ignores the electrons and their motion. The chemical systems is described by a ball and spring model. See, all these have been explained in my past video. I will share the link in the description. And energy of the system is calculated as a function of the nuclear position only. We are not considering each electronic potential. The force field, which are a set of interatomic potentials encompassing energy functions and parameters are used to define the molecular mechanics energy measuring the degree of mechanical strain within the system. That means instead of considering each and every atomic potentials, we are relying on force field. And as electrons are not explicitly accounted for their classical in classical molecular mechanics, very large systems can be simulated to predict conformational flexibility and relative stability. You have to note that point. That is, since we are not considering each individual electron, then very large systems can be accounted or can be explained using molecular mechanics. You can't do it with ab initio or DFT methods because they are considering individual electrons separately. Therefore, it may take a bit of time, it may take a lot of time and also many energy, most computing power to calculate them. So, if you are using quantum mechanical methods, then we will be considering only smaller systems. Whereas, if you are doing in molecular mechanics, that is, which are based on classical mechanics, you can uh, go for very large systems. Then comes the molecular dynamics. See, molecular dynamics and molecular mechanics both depend upon the classical mechanics, but molecular dynamics gives us, gives us an idea about the real-time behavior of molecules. That is, how this molecule, the biomolecular protein, behaves in real time, how, it vary, how its configuration and conformation varies with time. That's explained in molecular dynamics. So, the importance of MD. See, just consider this image. It's like an ant biting um, or stinging and or any insect stinging a person. See, consider an ant biting a person. The probability that an ant can bite a person, the effect, everything can be studied using molecular mechanics. That means the ant is biting to the body. It's studied using molecular mechanics. But what will happen then? Because once there is a pain on the hand, the person may shake his hand and the ant may be thrown off. Or the person may just squeeze the ant. That can be studied. That, that real, time, real time behavior can be studied using molecular dynamics. That's the difference. You have to note that difference. That molecular mechanics explains the... If you are considering a protein or a biomolecule. Molecular mechanics can be used to study the docking, docking efficiency, feasibility, the docking site, etc. But the real time behavior of the complex. Is that complex stable? Is that complex efficient? Is that complex um, uh, having any conformational changes after binding? You have to consider molecular dynamics for that. You can't do it with molecular mechanics or docking studies. 
Docking studies is used to identify the site of binding, where it will bind, how strong it will bind, and what is the feasibility of binding, etc. like that. And in molecular dynamics, we are studying the real-time behavior of systems. So, the way to reliability and accuracy. Conduct molecular mechanical experiments with various programs using different algorithms, scoring functions, etc. See, that I have already mentioned in my last video, if you are using more than one programs, which are based on different algorithms and scoring functions, then we can tabulate or we can evaluate our data based on these two experiments. And we can uh, identify the accuracy or reliability of an experiment. Uh, then evaluate the stability of the complex with real-time MD simulations in nanosecond or picosecond scale. That depends upon the system. Then the computational methods. These are uh, examples for the computational method. These are the um, programs, uh, computational methods, DFT, molecular mechanics, and molecular dynamics. Some methods which are based on DFT methods are the VASP, quantum, espresso, siesta, etc. And molecular mechanics are Autodoc, Autodoc, Vina, Discovery, Studio, Chimera, which are used for primarily for docking studies, etc. And if you're using MD, molecular dynamics simulation, you can go for Gromax, Amber, etc. See, of course, you can do this um, uh, molecular dynamics with uh, quantum espresso also, but quantum espresso is a DFT package and it, 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 it's useful for smaller systems. That means if you're considering any system like uh, uh, ZNGE, you think Germanium, ZNCE or ZNGE or ZNTE like that. And if you're considering the band structure, density of states and also the real-time behavior like molecular dynamics you can re rely on quantum espresso for that but if you're only if you're considering any proteins or biomolecules such larger systems then you can't go with the quantum espresso bit fit because it's a dft package so then what do we do with the dft programs as i mentioned earlier there are many dft programs here and uh, we are using quantum espresso basic uh, as a basic program because we are, we are doing many works for waveton quantum espresso so what do the dft programs do in the last slides we discussed what, what do the mm and md programs do here what we discussed what do the dft programs do dft programs require of course smaller systems smaller system means they may consider systems much larger than the abinitio method which are used in abinitio methods the, prob the difference between is that the comput uh, computational demand of the program. DFT may require less computational, DFT may be less computationally demanding than the initial programs. But still they use smaller systems when compared to the molecular mechanics and molecular dynamics or classical mechanical programs. Then um, we are mainly using semiconductors, conductors and insulators etc. You can uh, Id identify or uh, download the structures from the network, you can create your own. And the structure of these crystals may be optimized and their uh, band structure, the density of states, etc. may be calculated. So, you can uh, I, uh, differentiate the structures within semiconductors, conductor and insulators. Usually, we do it with solid substances, not necessarily. We use it with solid substances. And the band structure of solids, etc. can be determined. The total energy, stress, force, cell dynamics, etc. can be determined and optimization of unit cell structure and all the parameters may be uh, achieved with dft programs we are actually doing such works in our college that means we are using uh, various uh, semiconductors and uh, identify the variation in their band structure with doping like that we can do many programs so dft is mainly used for these kinds of applications whereas what do we do with the mm programs with molecular mechanics program we use very large systems like proteins and biomolecules which contains more than thousands of lakhs of atoms. We can identify the target, ligand, docking site, binding efficiency and the root mean square deviation, RMFD, etc. How efficient or strong the compound is in binding with the target? How, how reliable is the result and 3D visualization of the complex? That means once you can uh, use these programs to study the docking efficiency, docking site, etc. of the ligand on the given protein. You can identify the target and I mean, I'm explaining the basic steps of drug discovery. These are the primary steps of drug discovery. You got, because once you do, do a docking, you can call, you cannot, you cannot call that a drug. Because if any of your compound is docking with any of a protein, like say the COVID-19 pro main protease or something like that. If it simply docks, if your compound simply docks with the protein, you can't call it a drug. It's just a lead compound or it's just a 
a compound with a given activity it's never a drug a drug needs to be undergone various test including this computer not only computational but also practical test so you can um, study this docking site binding efficiency rmft etc and you can uh, verify the efficiency and strength of the binding complex and the reliability of the result and also the 3d visualization of the complex and with the md programs with the md programs we can study the real time behavior of complex the stability of complex and the pressure temperature volume and also density of the complex and there are some best practices to be followed in computational chemistry if you are interested in computational chemistry and if you are try uh, in uh, if you are wishing if you are willing to start a work in computational chemistry then there are some basic concepts that you have to keep in your mind the first one is to have a clear idea of the work you need to get a clear idea of the work that you are doing then have a deep knowledge of the theory of work you need to have a basic idea of the work and the theory of the work because if you are taking a protein from any virus like covid-19 if you are selecting a drug then you have to get an idea how this drug is going to bind with the protein or what changes will this drug make when it's binding with the protein or how this protein change conformational changes will affect the virus for example if you are considering a protein which is of not much importance in the virus and you are docking it with any of the ligand or any any compound then the you may get the docking result but the physical meaning of that uh, docking will be zero because that protein doesn't have much importance in the case of that virus so we need to identify the exact target you need for that you have to get a clear idea of the work and you have to have a deep knowledge of the theory of work then uh, learn the algorithms used by the program as i mentioned earlier the algorithms and scoring functions are much important you have to get an idea about the algorithms used because the program many programs are using different algorithms sometimes a given algorithm may not match your uh, your requirement so you need to get an idea about that then the extensive literature survey of course it is very very necessary for any kind of research if you are wish willing to do any research or project extensive literature survey is needed you need to have an idea of how uh, the people have done works in your field then the result should be reproducible and also the result should be verified these are the basics of the best practices of computational chemistry please note that if you are willing to do any research in this field or if you are willing to do any project please keep the six points in mind otherwise there may be questions about the accuracy reliability and the efficiency of your work so we'll be discussing some uh, tutorials in our next video so till then thank you and bye